One of the best things about the art industry is that anyone can pay a small fee of about $30 and you're granted access to an aesthetic experience fueled by multi-million dollar art rendered by the greatest artist in history. When you're faced with a campus, maybe twice your height and three times the length, what you're likely to experience is pure awe. Though you also feel slightly overwhelmed by its brilliance and maybe its sheer size. Its majestic presence tries to grip you. You take a step back. Your arms cross at your chest and your hand rests on your chin. A common gesture of contemplation. Maybe you're taking it its form and analyzing its principles of organization. Or maybe you find yourself nodding at the painting despite the fact that you're not thinking about anything at all. In fact, it feels impossible for you to soak it all in. So you turn yourself toward the next masterpiece, and the next. It surrounds you on all four walls, and your sense experience goes into overdrive. Your mind goes blank, your heart starts to race, and you don't know whether you should laugh or cry at the face of beauty in its truest forms. And if you've never felt this before, maybe one day you will. This is a real psychological disorder called Standard Syndrome. People can experience symptoms as mild as anxiety, confusion, and nausea, but as severe as temporary amnesia, paranoia, and even hallucinations. While these effects are short-lived and don't require any medical attention, they do have very real consequences, mostly resulting in vandalism of said multi-million dollar paintings. There's a long history and list of valuable art that's been intentionally damaged. To briefly list a few, people have thrown acid, rocks, and other objects, spray painted and slashed through the canvases with knives, and even scratching with one's fingernails. Occasionally leaving lipstick marks claiming to have been provoked by the power of art, and rarely, but certainly, smashing a Michelangelo statue with a hammer yelling, I am Jesus Christ. The Stendhal Syndrome and mental illness is only a couple of the many reasons people have sought to destroy art. In 2006, a 12-year-old boy stuck his chewing gum on a million-dollar painting simply by a lack of due diligence. Was it really the boy's fault? Should he even be allowed in the close vicinity of precious paintings? How can we trust the millions of people who visit the art galleries to abide by the rules and refrain from touching the artworks when it's really, really easy not to. I mean, honestly, are those tiny do not touch signs and barriers really going to stop me? What if the art beckons me and invites me to have a closer look? And what if I trip or lose balance? Exactly, what is the cost of having art available for the public? Today, on the topic of balancing accessibility in art preservation, we will explore three of the most famously vandalized artworks in history, Mona Lisa, The Night Watch, and the less remarkable but nonetheless infamous Jesus painting, Ecce Homo. To start, the Mona Lisa, arguably the world's most famous and now most heavily protected painting. Discovered after da Vinci's death in 1519, the oil painting is believed to have been worked on for several years. This is actually observable by the small cracks induced from drying and aging the paint called craculure throughout the whole piece. Da Vinci's layer work with almost transparent layers of color was also essential to giving the painting the illusion of striking realism, with her glowing skin and eyes and lips that seem to be in the flesh. Attributed to da Vinci's observation of light and space, his scientific understanding of the human anatomy, and his painting technique of fine shading called sumato. As you can see, there are no borders or visible brush strokes as he blends everything together when transitioning from light to shade. The Mona Lisa is categorized as a Renaissance painting, or at least one that heavily influenced the Renaissance. With the Mona Lisa, da Vinci set new standards for painting, like painting without outlines and the art profile pose. Breaking conventions, his subject was in half length 
and seated in three-quarter view, which quickly revolutionized all portraits that followed. When you look at the Mona Lisa, there is a definite allure, perhaps due to the overall sense of harmony, with curves of her hair and clothing echoed in the shapes of the valleys and rivers behind her, the subtle contrast and smooth transitions from light to dark. Right now, the Mona Lisa sits at the Louvre as a part of their permanent collection and valued at over $2 billion. It is unquestionably an exceptional work of art by a really famous artist. One has to wonder, why does everyone care so much about the Mona Lisa? Well, as some art historians put it, there was nothing that distinguished the Mona Lisa from other works of art until it was stolen. In fact, the Mona Lisa is the only painting ever to have been stolen from the Louvre. In 1911, the Mona Lisa went missing for two years, and it immediately drew a lot of attention. And naturally, the Mona Lisa became a media sensation and a household name. Luckily, she was returned without any damage in 1913, but her quick rise to fame made her an easy target. In early 1956, there was an unknown acid attack while on display in a museum in Montauban, France, which severely damaged the lower part of the painting. And later that year, a young boy had thrown a rock at a painting, which scratched off a speck of pigment near the left elbow. Since then, the art has been restored and a bulletproof case was put in to protect her from further attacks. Namely, in 1974, a disabled woman upset at the museum's policies attempted to spray red paint on the Mona Lisa while it was on display at the Tokyo National Museum. And if that wasn't enough, most recently in 2009, a Russian woman upset over being denied French citizenship threw a mug bought at the museum directly at the painting while it was on display at the Louvre. Thankfully, only the mug has shattered as it bounced off the bulletproof glass. So it seems the best way to protect a $2 billion painting is a bulletproof glass. Moving on to another really famous oil painting that has been vandalized numerous times. The Night Watch by Rembrandt van Rijen in 1642. It's a massive piece, nearly 11 feet high and 14 feet wide, located at the National Museum of Amsterdam. Rembrandt was a great technician of art. As he worked with a very limited palette, capable of tempering with and adjusting the pigments with exceptional handling. As a Baroque style group portrait painting, there is a fierce contrast between light and dark with clear details and dramatic effects. With the Night Watch, Rembrandt broke conventions of group landscape paintings as he expressed importance only to some figures by having figures overshadow each other. In addition to having some dressed in bright colors in contrast, most notably, Rembrandt's painting of eyes usually showed a small bright space, highlighted against the widely dark parts surrounding it. Again, for dramatic effects using contrast in value. Well, in 1911, the spectacular painting was attacked by an unemployed Navy cook, protesting his inability to find work who tried to cut through the canvas with a knife. Thankfully, he wasn't able to cut through the thick varnish on the painting. Unfortunately, 60 years later, in 1975, an unemployed school teacher was quite successful in cutting dozens of zigzag lines up to 12 inches long with a knife. He claimed that he did it for the Lord as he was ordered to do it. He was later sent to a psychiatric hospital, and the art was restored though the traces of the cuts still remain. Then in 1990, an escaped psychiatric patient had managed to spray acid onto the painting, which the guards were able to quickly dilute it with water. Now, bonus fun fact, as of July this year. The night was begin a year-long and extensive restoration process right in the museum itself. 
enclosed safely in a glass chamber. The whole restoration process will be available for public life and online viewing, the first of its kind. The painting, which was originally titled The Shooting Company of Franz Benny Koch and Willem van Rydenberg, had a pale background depicting daytime. Unfortunately, 60 years later, in 1975, and now resembles a night scene, hence the nickname, The Night Watch. Speaking of restoration, this last work of art wasn't actually vandalized per se, yet it technically suffered the most amount of damage. Echehomo, meaning Behold the Man, a fresco mirror painting originally done by Elias Garcias Martinez in the 20th century, it was of a widely depicted scene in Christian art of Jesus Christ with the crown of thorns. It was an obscure piece of art, done by a minor Spanish artist who used value and space in order to place dominance on the portrait of Christ, using contrast of dark hair against the pale face and pale background to further emphasize the facial features, which were the only parts adorned with details. I say it all in past tense because, well, it truly is in the past. In 2012, Dona Cecilia Jimenez, a local 81-year-old parishioner and an amateur painting restorer, decided to take it upon herself to restore the weathering damage on the fresco. However, many argue that the painting has suffered an even greater damage and a meme was born. Essentially, as a botched restoration, it has been dubbed Eche Mono, Behold the Monkey, or Monkey Christ, and even Potato Jesus. But not all hope was lost. Seen as a genuine work of a kind elderly lady who tried her best, people began praising her, and the potato Jesus went from being the town's laughingstock to becoming somewhat of a famous and successful tourist attraction, and is now even sold as merchandise. And you can actually buy a state-of-the-art Eche Homo mug for as low as $15 on Amazon. Well, hope you learned a lot. Don't touch precious art, and if you see any suspicious activity, alert the security right away. Thanks for watching.